I know some people don't want to hear it, but turn down your tracks. And is it okay to be in the yellow, the orange, the red here in GarageBand when it comes to volume level? Let's play around with this. Let's do some experimentation, shall we? So why don't we chuck on our autoplay here and just record in a couple of loops here. So I've got this 80s sync lead. We'll hit the record button and hit this one. There you go. We'll just do two bars and we'll loop it just for, for convenience and for time's sake. So we're going to put in that little 80s sync lead in G. I'm just saying that. Oh, why can't I loop this? Click, tap, loop. There we go. <laughs> so we've got that one. Let's add in a bit of a, a bit of a kick drum, shall we? In fact, we'll, we'll use a loop. We'll use an Apple loop to get a kick drum loop in here just to get something. Oh, we've got a topper. Yeah, let's do a... Yeah, that could go. We'll bring this one in from our Chromium fray. Whoop, come on. There we go. So we'll bring in our topper. Let's get a bit of a kick drum. Oh, again, we'll go with our loops. A bit of a kick drum going on in here. Sorry, in, in hindsight, I should have set this up earlier, but hey, you get to see the random way that I bring together a track here. As the big room kick. There you go. Let's bring the big room kick in there because uh, that's a nice loud one. And then let's find some sort of bass one, shall we? So again, we're going to go very simple here. We're just going to type in bass. Uh, oh, remind me to talk about um, my keyboard for my Mac because I spaced out on that one and we'll, we'll see how that all goes. So what about this Agile Funk? Maybe, let's try it. So we'll bring these in here and play. Yeah, the problem is that this isn't going to be in the right key uh, because this puts it in C. What if we just transpose... C to G is down three semitones, is it? They don't really go together. Anyway, for the purpose of this, <laughs> let's come in here. Now, by default, these are all set at what is basically zero dB. Now, you don't have dB markings here, but basically that's at your zero. This goes up to about plus 12 if you go there. If you double tap, it's back around to zero or unity gain. And then as you go down, it's into your minuses. It's not exactly that because, again, it doesn't have any of those labels. If we hit play... Looks okay, yeah, because everything's just there in the green. Our overall meter up the top here is still hitting the yellow a bit. So here's the problem though. As soon as we go to like eight tracks or 16 tracks, this is going to start getting a bit intense. What I see a lot of people do though is they're like, oh, I can't really hear that, that kick drum and I can't really hear that bass. And they turn them up like this and then you get something like this going on. So what you'll notice there is that we're getting these leave behind dots on that track and we're getting the leave behind dots on our main track. I'll just play it again and just watch the kick drum and watch the main track here and see what happens. So you're getting those leave behinds. Now, anytime you have that, it means that you are going over the maximum amount. You're going over zero dB and that is not good generally. Now, here's the thing. The reason that people do this and they crank up their volumes and they get away with it for a long time is that as long as you're not clipping overall on your overall mix, then it's okay. However, uh, you kind of let into a false sense of security because with Apple Loops and with virtual instruments, they will protect you from yourself. They will use auto limiting to make sure that even at the highest volume, they're not going to actually cause any problems. But what you're going to start hearing is you're going to get a pumping sound coming in. So let's just play these all at maximum volume again. And we don't really have enough volume going through to hear it properly now. But if we, as we lay it up more, if you leave everything at your max volume or close to it, and you're always up here in the orange and the red, you're going to find that you're really pushing the ceiling of the maximum volume. And you're going to get this sort of pumping sound, a bit like a side chaining sound. Now, if you're going for that sound, more power to you. Do it. Have fun with it. But most of the time, you don't want that. So here is the one tip. I say all of that to say this. Turn your tracks down. Like, it, there's nothing wrong with having your tracks down here or here. Like, this is absolutely totally fine, especially if I was going to build this out and make it 16 tracks or 32 tracks. If they're all even up here, then it's going to overload. You want your tracks. Remember, every time you add a new track, you're adding more amplitude, you're adding more sound, more pumping sound is being pushed out. So if you have it down here... 
Is that okay? Oh, but Pete, that's too wussy. The sound, it's got to be loud and pumping. Well, yeah, except guess what? GarageBand brings it up to zero dB anyway. GarageBand has auto normalization. So if I export this at that level or at that level, then it's going to be exactly the same. It's, it's, it's all about the balance. The only difference is you won't get the pumping and the clipping if you keep things a little bit lower. So I know some people don't want to hear it, but turn down your tracks. And a related thing here is your input gain. Also turn down your input gain when you're recording because this is your output gain, which is less important than your input gain. The reason that clipping here is not actually a problem is that they're virtual instruments. You're not actually clipping the recording. The sample is not changing based on how loud you output it. But if you're recording your own instruments, your own voice, your own vocals, then do definitely watch for clipping, for going into the red on the way in. We've showed it before, but just for a refresher, if we come in here to your audio recorder, keep an eye on this one on the left. If this input gain meter is anywhere near the red, drop it down. That's always going to be a problem. So hopefully that helps you out. Turn down your tracks and you'll be fine. But And if you want more volume, guess what? Turn up your monitor speakers. So if I've got these down at a low volume, so say I'm listening to them down like this and I'm like, oh no, I can't. Now I can't hear it. Guess what? Now I can. So keep that in mind. You can turn up your output volume of your speakers or your headphones so that you can hear your tracks. Don't just turn up each track until it goes to 11.